Okay, the recording is on. Welcome everybody to the class on media and technology in ministry. Uh, we're going to pray together and then we will get started. Uh, may I request somebody to pray with us? Uh, Kiran, if your mic is fine, why don't you pray? And we will start. Yes, sir. We'll pray. Father, we come before your throne once again, and we want to say thanking you, Father God, for your goodness, for your faithfulness, Father God. Thanking you. Thanking you for all things, Father God. Thanking you, your promises, Father God. Father God, help us to move forward, Father God. Give your wisdom and knowledge to the subject, Father God, that we can understand nicely and apply to your kingdom work, Father God. Father God, we just are meeting to your hand. Each and every student, Father God, going to be... Uh, become a pastor father god just give your knowledge and guidance and your revelation father god that wherever we'll go father god uh, we, we can do ministry a good ministry father god could become a good servant of your father god help us to move forward thanking you father god thanking you all things almighty jesus name we pray amen 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 very good Thank you. All right, so uh, we are in this chapter on uh, uh, technology platforms or software platforms. And I'm just kind of, um, you know, uh, showing you different platforms that you could use, software platforms that you could use for different uh, ministry needs. And uh, just for, you, for, for all of us to become familiar with it and then, uh, you know, in 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 time, uh, whenever you need something, you could go and explore using these platforms. Now, last week uh, we were talking about uh, the content manage management system. Uh, basically, uh, it is a software system that you could use to to your websites, and um, if you do it well, if you create a good website using uh, a content management system or, you know or, or basically if you create a good website uh, it becomes a platform for you uh, to deliver your content not only locally which is to your own church or your congregation or people in your city or in your region but it becomes a platform for you to deliver content globally right so of course um, there are certain things that you need to do. Uh, we call it, uh, you know, it's technically, it's called search engine optimization. That means you have to make your website uh, that is um, um, that is constructed, is built in such a way, and it has content in such a way that uh, search engines, uh, that means Google, Bing, other search engines, but people usually look for things. Uh, up so that your content is picked up and presented to uh, users or people who are searching for certain things. So, uh, so for example, our APC, our church website, apcw.org, has sermons, and we've you know we've put in sermons from 2004. So that's almost uh, that's about 18 years worth of sermons. And these sermons are, are come along with sermon notes. And then, you know, later on, uh, we had uh, sermon videos. And of course, there's a sermon audio and there's the PowerPoint. So every sermon, uh, especially in the last, uh, you know, 10, 15 years or so, has has a video, has an audio, has a sermon notes and PowerPoint. So it's a useful resource. Uh, but just putting it on a website is not enough. It has to be searchable. It has to be presented to people when they search. And so uh, there's a way to do it. Uh, it's called search engine optimization. And so today, uh, if you search for certain things, uh, the content on APC's website is, is, a, is, is a seen in many different parts of the world. So um, uh, of course, you know, we, we haven't yet you know, come, or we're not necessarily on the first page. It may be on the second or the third page in certain searches. So we still need a lot more work to be done to optimize the website. And we are continuing to work on it. But our goal eventually is for phrases and search things, search phrases that people use 
that is related to the content we are putting out, we want to be on the first page so that people find us and then they can use it anywhere in the world. Yeah. But uh, I want you to think about how what an amazing uh, platform or tool or opportunity we have through the internet that if you if we build a website and we do the things that are right, that are needed, the content we put out can be accessible from any country on the earth. Of course, we're talking about English speaking or the people in that same language. Uh, uh, when they search anywhere in the world, you know, when they search for example, a sermon on on receiving God's guidance, you know, so whether they are sitting in New Zealand or Australia or some country in South America or North America or in Europe, uh, and they search in English, you know, sermons on receiving God's guidance, you know, then uh, sermons that from APC, uh, APC website shows up anywhere in the world uh, uh, on page one or two or something like that. And then they can access it. Or if they look for a, you know, some book on receiving God's guidance, the book that we have shows up. So think about what an amazing platform uh, this is, right? That um, if you build your website and the content that you're putting out, whether it's the sermons, whether it's the books, whether it's the daily devotionals, whatever, and you're putting it out, um, and this is available 24-7. That means all the days of the week, all the time. You know, so anybody in any part of the world, you are asleep, uh, you know, you're going about your normal routine, but they are searching for different search phrases. And if your the content on your website is presented to them, they're going to access it. They may listen to it. They may watch the video. They may download the book. And, uh, you know, you are actually ministering globally in a very passive way. It means through the website. But that's what's happening. And I will show you some results that we are seeing on uh, APC website. Uh, you know, we've, we've had over 3 million downloads of, of, our, of, our, of our things, of our sermons and books and all that from almost every nation. So, uh, and we are just trying to improve all of that. So then it becomes more and more visible to people in every country, in every English, you know, English speaking country. Uh, so that when they search, they can use the resource. It's an amazing uh, platform, right? So this is what you can do if you have a good website. And last week I showed you uh, the content management system. And uh, when you set up your sermons, you can set up your books and uh, you can, uh, you know, you, you set it up in such a way that when people search, they find it and then they, you can use it. They, they can use it and it's all free. So they don't have to um, pay money to use it. They just go ahead and uh, use it. Okay. So now uh, I just want to go into a few more, you know, there, there are several different things that I just want to share with you. Uh, the next one that I just want to talk about is the church app, apps, right? So, you know, you could create an app, uh, basically an app uh, that runs on the mobile phone, right? So uh, some of you have, know that uh, we have a church app, the APC church app. Uh, I have it on my phone. And so the church app, uh, of course, the website is there, but nowadays a lot of people are, you know, familiar or they like to use an app. So the church app, creating an app um, that runs either on, you know, the uh, most people have Android phones or if they have a iOS, that's okay. Uh, the app becomes a very useful tool to deliver content uh, to people in your community, right? Or anywhere in the world. So uh, the APC Church app, uh, uh, I don't, we don't have a count of, you know, of how many downloads there are, but there, it's definitely more than 10,000. Uh, and I'll tell you why, we, uh, we don't have an exact count, but um, um, this Church app, so we are using the Church app uh, to deliver our daily devotionals every day, people can listen to a daily devotional uh, 
and a lot of other, you know, our sermons, a lot of other things are available on the church app. So people can uh, actually go and use this app uh, for a lot of things. And, uh, you know, uh, we provide what is called as a toolkit. Um, so they can access the toolkit, uh, make use of a lot of free resources that are there, um, and uh, so on. So you can design the, the, your church app however you want. Now, there are two ways you can go about. Either you can have some software developers develop your own app, uh, develop you know, an app from scratch, which is a lot of work, but it, that's one way of doing it. Or the other way of doing it is you just use existing platforms that are there that you can, through which you can quickly build an app and release it to the public. So the platform, the people hosting the platform, they will take care of everything for you. So that's what we are doing. And I just want to share with you the platform that we are using so that in the future, if your church or your ministry decides that, hey, uh, let's create an app uh, for our church or our ministry. And, uh, you know, let's put out, you know, for whatever objective you have, uh, maybe you want to put out content or maybe you want to do registrations and administer conferences and all of those kinds of things. A lot of different things people use app, uh, 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 an app for. So I'm just going to share uh, about that a little bit on how you can uh, use a, a platform uh, to deliver your app. So we have what is called as customchurchapps.com. Okay, so that, that is the platform we are using to deliver our app. So, you know, we did not build our app um, uh, 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 on our own. Instead, we are using this platform. So if you remember custom church apps, um, they will help you. You, know, you can develop your uh, an app very easily. And they will take care of uh, delivering. So many big, you know, famous churches, uh, Hillsong, and uh, so many others are using the same uh, uh, um, uh, same. Uh, platform to build their app. And then they have lots of features. Uh, you can manage your events and your volunteers. Um, uh, I mean, right now we don't use that, but there are other things that they are providing uh, that you could use. So, you know, live, so even our live thing is is on the app and so on. So they, they, they provide lots of features that you could use, right, for your church uh, church app. So basically what you need to do is you, you sign up for them, sign up with them. Um, they have a, a simple pricing. Where is their pricing? Um, uh, I don't know if they show it here. They have a um, their price. Uh, I'm not sure, not sure whether they, um, what is the, I forget what is the pricing. It's not very, um, can't, I can't remember the, the amount we pay on a monthly basis for them to manage this for us. But uh, it's not, um, you know, it's not very bad. So you can send push notifications as well to people. Uh, they can make contributions online, a lot of things that you could do, right? So how does this work? So you sign up with an account with them, and then they give you access to their portal, uh, a console, right? So you can log into their console. So I'm just showing you the console. So if you log into their console, this is where... Uh, you can update. You basically set up the app, what you want, and you can update it, right? So this is our All People's Church console. So this is how we set up the app, right? So uh, you're just using these simple forms. You can set up, you know, how you want your app. So we have set it up. We want these things in the app uh, and, and so on. So, uh, you know, any developer... So you you know so you can you can upload all these things you can set up 
all the banners you want. And that's, you know, that's how you build your app. Okay, so pretty straightforward thing. Any developer can help you set it up. And it's very easy. So literally within, you know, uh, one or two weeks, uh, uh, you can get your app ready. Then they will, once you're ready, they will push it out to the, um, uh, 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 the um, App Store and the Google Play Store. And once all of, I mean, there's a little process involved to do that. They will do it for you. And then once they push it out on the, uh, App, Apple and Google Play Store. Then once it's ready, then people can download from you know from uh, the App Store or Play Store, Google Play Store, and get it on their phones. So they will do that for you, right? So but this is where we do it, and this is where we update. You know, on a, on a daily basis. You know, for us, we're updating it on a daily basis. Every day we're releasing a video, and uh, uh, weekly our sermons are also made available, you know, we update the sermons weekly. So these are two things that are updated in the app on a regular basis, right? Now, uh, they would also give you some information, uh, uh, but sadly, uh, we're not able to see all the data because uh, for some reason, uh, they uh, their data is, uh, it's not up to date, but uh, you'll see that uh, I'm just waiting for the data to come. They will tell you some some insight into what people are doing with the app. Uh, let's say so. There's more than ten thousand unique users uh, of the app. Uh, so many launches. So many iOS launches. Uh, One point two five million interactions, uh, and so on. Right. So. Uh, you know, we could see now on on a ba regular basis uh, what is happening, uh, but this data is is not always very accurate. Because they have some problems there uh, going on. So, but they give you some amount of data. You know what's on what's happening. Uh, so, in terms of the downloads, um, they're not able to give us uh, uh, correct data. Uh, uh, but uh, you know it's somewhere over ten thousand downloads and so on. So, uh, but you can go into seeing you know what are the people watching, what are the what is the media people are watching, what are the screens they are using. Uh, so obviously it's this uh, daily devotional video that uh, people are watching regularly, and then there are other things. So uh, this is. This is how we have set up our church app. Uh, we are using uh, uh, custom church apps uh, to to set up our app. That's the home homepage, and we just update it on a daily basis. And uh, then it's it's there. People can use it, right? So just keep this in mind. Uh, if you want to have a church app or you want an app for your ministry, uh, you can uh, set it up and they have a lot of features. You know, there's a lot of versions of the Bible that they make available, reading plans uh, and so on, okay, uh, which they can use. Uh, I forget how much, what's the amount, but let's see here. Okay, so monthly cost is less than $100. Um, uh, it's about... Uh, $75, yeah. So it's about $75 a month, uh, which is what the cost is, okay? So that's um, the the church app. And uh, you can think about um, using uh, the church app uh, like how we are doing, which is to deliver content. Or you can also think about um, uh, using the church app uh, for registering for events, conferences, uh, those kinds of things. And somebody who who, who has uh, some software knowledge, they can set this app up for you, and you can run with it. You can go, for, you know, use it, and it's easy, right? Um, any questions on church app? It's just a very quick. Uh, walkthrough. Uh, 
Any questions on using an app for church ministry? Any questions related to that? It's clear? Okay. So uh, that's, uh, that's, you know, about how you can get a church app running for your church or your, an app running for your church or your ministry. The next thing I'm going to change and talk about is um, making use of uh, e-learning platforms, right? So, of course, it is something we started doing only recently. Uh, but I just want to talk a little bit about that and show you some options. Uh, so that so now, what about e-learning? So, you know, if you want to provide teaching and content to to community, uh, whether it's your church community or, in a larger sense, people beyond your church community, in a very structured way, uh, you can make use of e-learning platforms okay now uh, you can do it uh, actually it's pretty easy to do it now uh, either you can you uh, host a platform and use it completely yourself or you can use already existing platforms just set up an account and start using it and I will show you both I will show you both so there are free e-learning platforms that are available, okay? Uh, and there are several options. Uh, two of the, uh, um, uh, uh, actually, there are three uh, really, you know, what to say, good platforms. One is uh, Open edX. Uh, it's an e-learning pla e learning platform that, uh, that, is, that, that, there's a, that that's an open source. There's another product called Moodle, which also is being used uh, widely. That's another platform. And uh, there's a third platform. I'm forgetting its name. I think it's called Canva. Is it Canva? No. Oh, sorry, I'll get its name correctly. Anyway, there's another, which again is being used very widely by universities and so on. So we uh, are using the Open edX platform, and um, this is a free product. So you can download it, yeah, and you can set it up, and uh, you know you can deliver your content through that. Now, uh, of course, there is the student view, the way a student sees the platform, and there is the teacher view, that means how the teacher sets up the the lectures and the whatever they want to give assessments uh, uh things like that you know so the the online learning platform is a very useful tool or a software thing that you can think about uh, to help maybe people in your own congregation if you want to you know do some courses for them you know so the advantage is people can you know do it at their own pace and at their own time now, of course, you can run Bible study classes, you know, like every Wednesday, come to the church and we will do Bible study. You can do it like that. Or you can say, you know, hey, I'm putting this online. Go and listen to it and do the notes. Go to the notes and do the assessments at your convenience whenever you have time. So uh, if you have a Bible study every Wednesday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., uh, if people are not able to make come to that Bible study, uh, they will miss out on it. But if that same Bible study is put out in a, in a structured way through an e-learning platform, you know, if they cannot make it on Wednesday, they can listen to it on Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday, any other day, any other time, they can go through those lessons and you, you know, they can be a part of that learning process. So using an e-learning platform is very useful. So one option, like I said, is you can have the you can host the e-learning platform yourself, which is what we are doing, or you can use some existing platforms that are already available 
and you can deliver your course through that. One platform that is being used, Udemy, D U D E M. Yeah, Udemy.com. Okay. So one platform that's being used uh, by uh, uh, people to deliver courses is Udemy. Right. So I, I, I will uh, I will share both with you. Uh, so let me uh, first let me share my screen. Um, I'll just walk you through our platform and then also share about you. So, so this is our e-learning platform. Now, some of you may already have logged in and, you know, you already have accounts on it. Uh, so uh, it's just uh, under the APC Bible College. We have, uh, we have, we are hosting this. This platform is just basically built using an open source it's called open edX right it's an open source product so we it's available to anybody who wants to use it so we downloaded open edX this is the product and then we set up our own courses and so on so what we are seeing here is the student view so those who want to come uh, as students I and mean, those who want to study courses they can come in they register once set up an account and they, they can sign up for any of these courses, right? And then they can go through the courses at their own pace. Now, of course, uh, you know, we can run the courses as we want. We can run it with a start and end date, or we can run a course without any end date. That means they can, people can do it however and whenever they want. So for instance, the foundations is, you no, know, it doesn't have a start and end date. People can just start anytime, finish anytime. Whereas these courses, our Bible college courses, we want people to finish, you know, like they want, they're following the same uh, course as we are doing. So they can go in and do these courses anytime, uh, but within, you know, within the start and end dates, they had to finish the course. So what we are doing is all the courses that we are teaching at, in the Bible college, the same things are being made available through the e-learning platform and students will use it. Now, uh, you can see the numbers here, about 910 students from 77 countries. So it is uh, giving us an opportunity to serve these students. Uh, and these students, well, they may be doing just doing one course or they may be doing two courses. Uh, you know, it's, it's a completely up to them uh, how they want to study, right? So this is one way of doing it. That is, you set up your own e-learning platform and you can do it. Now, just to give you an idea uh, of, uh, so this is a student view, uh, just to give you an idea of what it looks like as a teacher. So if I go to the, uh, this is the teacher login. So if I log in as a, as a, you know, the way I, I, I have to set up the courses and et cetera, um, uh, I log in. So this is where I can manage the courses that I'm teaching now. So, uh, sorry. So these are all the courses that are being run right now. And uh, uh, these, for example, this is the course, media and technology course uh, that we are doing. So this is where I can create, you know, these sections that, that students are able to see, right? So it's pretty, very simple. Uh, you, you know, we can create these sections and, uh, uh, for under each lecture, sorry, under each lecture, we can add notes, we can add video, uh, a lot of things we can do. We can create assessments, a lot of that. Okay, so uh, uh, it's it's very easy to set up. Maybe I should just have a log out of this. This is the live version, and I can go. I just play with the. This is the developing version. So this is not the live version. Um, I can just show you. Ah, uh, uh, long. So 
sorry. Um, Okay, so here I can do anything I want to do. This is the development version. You know, if I just, just want to show you, I can add a new section. Um, welcome, students. You know, I can add, uh, I can add a new unit. So this is where, you know, I can add a component. I'm not saying you have to learn all this. I'm just showing you. It's pretty easy that I can add a discussion. I can add a text, announcement, whatever. Uh, I can add, uh, you know, text. I can add question answer section. And to add question answers, it gives us, you know, so many. Uh, I can do a checkbox question, drop down multiple choice. I could do that. I could even add a video if I want. So all our lecture videos, this is how it's added. And, uh, you know, you could update that. So uh, it's very easy I mean, to set up and to work with this. As a teacher, you know, know all our pastors, uh, teaching assistants, they, they work here. Uh, they, you know, they're able to um, set up uh, their the course here on a daily basis and uh, uh, they this is how we you know we we run the courses by setting it up and it's pretty easy all our pastors know how to do this and uh, uh, teaching assistants also help with this right so this is one way that is you can uh, you can uh, run you can set up open edX and you can set up your courses and you can run it, okay? So that's one way, and that's how we are doing it. The other way, which actually is an easier one, is there are online learning platforms. You know, uh, there are many of these. Um, example, Udemy is one, right? So, uh, so what you can do is you can go to Udemy, and you can set up an account here. That means your church or uh, your ministry can set up an account with Udemy and you can start delivering your courses here, right? And there are some organizations that are already doing it. I'm talking about Chris. Now, of course, on Udemy, uh, you know, they deliver courses on everything, all kinds of topics, right? all kinds of topics. So, you know, uh, they can do technology, business, all of that. But in this, there are people who are also delivering content, uh, Christian content. Right, so let me just search for uh, a, a course on gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, um, so somebody's delivering a course here on Udemy on gifts of the Holy Spirit. You see, and they're even charging for it. They're charging five hundred rupees for it. Uh, so it's prophetic ministry by this person, Dr. Stuart Patiko, right? About 403 students. Um, so he's running this course under religion and spirituality. He's running this course here, right? And, uh, and it's very easy because, uh, uh, and there are, you see, there are other courses available here. Uh, anointing gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, or, you know, so, and a good number of people are registering. Um, uh, dream interpretation, hearing God for yourself. So, you know, there are a lot of people who are running courses on Udemy, right? Bible, Bible courses. So, um, so that's another option. You can, you know, I mean, you as an individual or uh, your church or your ministry can uh, set up an account on Udemy and you can deliver courses through Udemy very easily. You don't, so you don't have to host anything. All you have to do is enter your content uh, through the, you know, the administrative console that they give you. And it is available to students all over the world. So you can get started very easily. 
and you can also charge them a certain amount of money. Uh, and of course, part of the money, some amount will go to Udemy and the rest of the money will come to you. Um, but this is a great way to uh, set up and use an e-learning platform. Okay, so there are two options that I showed. One is uh, what we are doing ourselves, which is we are hosting the platform ourselves, which because then it gives us full control. You know, we can monitor all the students and we can run our courses. We're running a full Bible college uh, through this. Or you can use a publicly available platform like Udemy and uh, you can set up your course and you can deliver your course through that uh, you know, and, and make it available for people. Okay, so that's it. I'll stop with this. Um, so today, what I shared with you was two things. One is how you can have a church app uh, and set it up very quickly. You can use the platform custom church apps, set up your church app, use the church app to serve people. The second thing we talked about today is e-learning platform, how you can set up an e-learning platform for your church or ministry. Uh, you can use open edX, which is the open source software you can set up yourself and you can deliver courses through it. Or you can go to an existing platform like Udemy. So you don't have to do any programming or anything. Um, we just set up an account uh, and then you start delivering your course through that platform and you can reach hundreds, thousands, hun or many, many thousands of people uh, through that course. Okay, so two things that we covered. App, church, uh, app and e-learning platform. There are a few more things I'll share with you, uh, maybe for a couple of more classes, then we will be able to wrap up this course uh, and I'll do a quick review of the whole course. Okay, any questions on these two things, church uh, app and e-learning platform, any questions? Kanan, Dave, Kiran, you all okay? You all with me so far? Okay, good. So let's close for today. Uh, I see your comments in the chat and um, that's fine. Thank you. Um, we will wrap up for today. We'll continue this tomorrow. I'll just share some other platforms that you could use. Um, things that uh, analyze your online work and so on. And um, just for you to be familiar so that in the future, uh, at any point, if you feel like uh, you know your church or your ministry wants to use any of these, at least you know where to go, how to get started. And uh, you can tell uh, some technical people uh, to get this going for your church, for your ministry. Okay, let's close in prayer. Uh, could one of us close in prayer, uh, whoever? Kanan, uh, if your mic is okay, can you close in prayer, please? Okay, that's uh, maybe uh, Kanan's mic is not okay. All right, Dave, I don't know if your mic is okay. But, or Kieran, then you'll have to pray for all of us. Okay, I see your mic is not okay. No problem. Kieran, go ahead, just close in prayer, please. Okay, so we'll pray. Father God, we want to say thanking you, Father God, to the subject. Thanking you, Father God your wisdom and knowledge father god easily we can understand father god father god help us to move forward and apply to your kingdom work all media technology father god help mm -hmm. us father god, thanking you father god all things rest of the day submitting to your hand take care of every side almighty jesus name we pray amen amen okay all right dave i see your comments 
Thank you, everyone. No problem. Uh, we will meet tomorrow morning. We will continue with Revelation, our study in Revelation, and then after that, some more on media and technology. God bless you. Uh, enjoy your afternoon. I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome. God bless. Bye.